me if I wanted to share a story. Um, many ideas came to mind, um, and I was like, okay, I have to start writing a speech. What am I going to say? But then I was like, I don't want to read off the paper my story. I want to look at everybody and let them know what happened, share my story. I have some point just in case I forget it. My mind goes a lot. So I, I'm going to share a little background with all of you. Um, I'm Ecuadorian. I'm 33 years old. I've been here since 1996. Um, and yeah, and I live with my sister and my brother at the time. And um, my mother, sadly, she passed away um, due to cerebral cancer. And that happened when I was about 17 years old, like two years after I came to New York. Um, yes, it was tough, um, but um, you know, you learn, you learn to move on and to be strong. Um, I went to high school, went to college. I'm a graphic designer and photography, a photographer. I'm sorry, you can tell I'm nervous, right? <laughs> so um, before I got sick. Um, my sister, which is sitting right on my table, she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Um, her thyroid was removed, and thank God she's, she's now healthy. She's good. Um, she decided to move back to Ecuador. So she left, and shortly after, two weeks after, I was diagnosed with leukemia. I couldn't even face my sister. I couldn't bring myself to really call her and tell her, listen, Guess what? <laughs> because after everything we went through with my mother and with her, the last thing I wanted to do was me, causing them so much pain with cancer again. So yeah, um, my sister came back from Ecuador to stay with me and go through everything I involved, chemo and all that. And I had, so, I had two choices, I said, at the time when I was diagnosed. I could either cry forever, try to find something, someone to blame, but there was no reason to blame somebody. There was nothing to blame. So I said, okay, if I have to get chemo to find this, let's get chemo started. What else am I going to do? But before that, my hair was so long at the time. I was like, I don't want my hair to go to waste. Let's donate it. So before chemo kicks in and start my hair falling off, I just decided to donate it. And I did. Shortly after, everything else came off, but hey, it grows back, right? So yeah. So after two rounds of chemo, I was on remission. But I have to get prepared to get a transplant, a bone marrow transplant, of which my brother, which is also seen here, with me, he was the one that was the better match for me. So I went in one, one more time and was admitted to the bone marrow unit, getting ready for to receive his cells. And until this day, Every time that I remember what, what he went through, all the shots that he had, all the side effects that he, that he went through, which weren't that bad compared to what I, did, I went through, but still, I didn't want my brother to go through something like that. But he did. And yeah, and he went that day to the hospital to get his blood, his blood and his cells. And shortly after, it was January 24th when I got his cells. I was excited. As many others here, it was like a celebration day. And it was. As the day passed by, there was no change in my white blood cells. It was still at zero. So the transplant didn't take. And at that moment, I felt so much fear. I remember holding my doctor's hand, Dr. Keisner, and 
I told her I was scared. What's next? And then with Dr. Bayer, they decided to, it was the best thing to do to try core blood. So yeah, it was that, core blood. And on March 1st, I got my transplant from core blood, which until now, I'm still thankful and pray for her because it was from a baby girl. That's all I know. Um, that she has a very, very long and healthy life. And yeah, when one morning, early morning, I in the hospital like at five in the morning, like all the time the drug or blood that early. Two nurses walked in screaming, Angela, Angela. It's like it's, it's working. I'm like, I'm like what? <laughs> I was already so tired and sleepy. And they woke me up. They literally like woke me up. I was almost in panic because I didn't know what had happened. And they told me, yeah, it was working. And I was like, really? Is that really happening? So it was, I was in so much shock and so much happiness, even though I was so tired. And yeah, I trusted my doctor so much. I prayed to God every single day that I'm in his hands and to work his magic and a miracle through my doctors. And I am forever grateful to Dr. Bayer, all his team, all the nurses. <laughs> Dr. Bayer, Dr. Bayer used to say to me, all this shall pass. I kept those words in my mind every time I felt that. I couldn't go anymore. All this shall pass. And it did. I'm, I'm standing and it heals. <laughs> well, I cannot thank all the staff enough for all the support, the nurses, that they, don't, it were, that they not only gave me my medicine on time every day, but they were there to hold me, to hug me, to wipe my tears. I call them my little angels and I always pray for them to continue not only doing their job, but to care for their patients. Because not everybody do that. Not all the doctors do that. Yes, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What can I do for you? It means so much. And I am forever thankful for all of them. Everybody. I'm not only a survivor of leukemia, and I'm not defined by leukemia. It was a chapter of my life, and as long as I'm standing, I'm going to fight. I'm not only a survivor, but like I said to many of my friends, I'm a warrior. And like everybody else that has gone through something like this, you have to keep fighting and trusting your doctors, your family. And they're always there. And to me, that meant a lot. My family, my brother, my sister, that they were there holding my hand all the time. Thank you. Thank you.